Hi Lisa, it's Katie Wright, um, and I'd like to do my presentation for you. Um, so I'll start with a little bit of an introduction. Um, so through this project, my aim is to talk a little bit about my creative process for this project. Um, and then I'll be showing you the actual art that I had created for this. Um, I will also be talking about my connection to um, the class and what I've learned throughout uh, the course. And I'll also present some additional research that I did on this topic. Um, so to begin, I'd like to talk about my creative process, as I mentioned. Um, so when it comes to uh, creating something creative or artistic, um, I like it to be really organic and um, I'm a very go with the flow sort of person. Um, and I know this about myself because this is a lot of what I do when I write music. Usually um, it starts with just a couple of lines and then things sort of flow from there. Um, it hasn't been all that often that I've actually thought of a theme before I start writing a song. Um, it just sort of comes together, although sometimes I do think of a theme and that sort of helps me in my process. Um, but that wasn't the case with this project. This was extremely organic uh, and I'll get into that. So there was a day, I want to say maybe three or four weeks ago that one of my best friends came over and we were hanging out. Um, and she really felt like she wanted to paint and me being the crafty person that I am, uh, I was able to pull some canvases and some paints out of my, uh, my bookcase and we began to paint. We put down some newspaper, put some music on, that sort of thing, and just started to create. Um, so I had started just by painting my background white, um, just because I wanted to sort of see where things would go and I wanted to give a little bit of uh, movement to my canvas with the white. Um, and after I had done this, I remembered seeing on YouTube a number of videos on a technique called acrylic pour. Um, and the way that acrylic pour works is very different than other painting methods. Um, so what you do is you get a cup um, that you don't mind getting dirty with paint and you fill it up with different colors of paint in different levels. Um, so basically you fill up the cup and then you put the canvas on top of the cup and then you flip it all over really quick so none of it spills out. Um, and then very slowly you lift up the cup onto the canvas and it all pours out, hence the name acrylic pour. Um, so that is what we both ended up doing. Um, for me, I'll show you the piece of art that I had created. I just have to, uh, to grab it here. Um, but this is the piece of art that I had created. I'll, I'll actually put it this way. This is the orientation that it needs to be. So this is the piece of art that I created. And in the middle there, you can see that there is a figure of a mermaid. I apologize that uh, my camera skills are a little bit shaky. Um, but what I really liked about this piece and how I knew that it was going to be um, for this, sorry, I'm holding it wrong again, uh, for this class was that I had felt compelled to use the medicine wheel colors, which you'll notice here. We've got uh, white, black, yellow, and red were the only colors I used. They did sort of mix into pinks and oranges here and there. Um, but those were the colors that I started with and I layered them into uh, small glasses. It was a small canvas I was working on. Um, I knew as soon as I had poured those colors that this would be what I was going to use for this project. Um, I knew this before the results had even come out <laughs> um, because sort of the way that this works is uh, you pour everything onto the canvas and then you sort of like tip it and tilt it around and all of the, the paint moves and flows and sort of creates itself. Um, but I had just sort of known by my color choice and by this sort of feeling in my heart that I knew this was going to be what I would use for this project. 
Um, while I was tipping the swirls of paint, I wasn't really paying too much attention. Um, and then before I knew it, there was this mermaid figure in the center of my canvas. Um, and that really reminded me, uh, as a connection to class, of when you were talking about the carving of soapstone. Um, and that the medium, so the soapstone, already knows what it wants to be before it's created. And it also says to me that there is an importance of relationship, which is something that we've been talking about um, all semester, um, that relationship really is the basis of Indigenous pedagogy um, and, the and the importance of stories as well. Um, so my relationship to mermaids is not just that I love the little mermaid and my best friend sort of looks like her, um, but that I've always thought about being a mermaid when I was swimming, especially when I was little. I used to pretend I was a mermaid in the pool and in the bathtub. I just, I always wanted to be in water wherever I was. Um, I've always loved water. And that also makes me think of um, in Indigenous cultures, women's responsibility to be protectors of the water um, in, in many cultures. Um, and this also sort of connects with me on a spiritual level because I do personally uh, really believe in uh, my astrology and things like that. And I am an Aquarius, so I'm the water bearer. Um, and I've al always felt best and most full when I'm near water or I'm able to step into a lake or a river or a stream. Um, so that was sort of my reflection on this process. Uh, I now want to turn to some of the additional research that I did on this. Um, there's not much that I could find in the scholarly like WLU website. Uh, for the library, so I just went to Google and I typed in Indigenous Mermaid Stories. Um, and one of the first things that came up was from nativenewsonline.net. And I sort of gravitated towards that one because the photo uh, icon that comes up with the Google search was uh, the colors of the medicine wheel. And I felt that that was fairly appropriate since that's the colors of my painting. Um, so when I had searched this, the article that came up was called Of Water Spirits and Men, Mermaids in Native American Mythology. Um, and it gave, it gave a really um, brief yet informative uh, view of several different indigenous cultures around the world that do have mermaid stories. And I'd like to just talk about those a little bit right now. Um, so they do open up that article by saying that the first appearance of mermaids anywhere in um, our history was approximately 30,000 years ago um, in cave paintings, which is really amazing because, you know, their mermaid could have looked a lot like my mermaid painting without even knowing it, which is pretty cool. Um, in Australia, they call mermaids yak yaks. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of research into that as I wanted to focus a little bit more on Turtle Island mermaid stories um, and I'll get into those right now. So the first one that they talk about is of the He Nuas, which is H-E is the first word and Nuas, N-W-A-S, uh, which means the mermaid, which is a Passamaquoddy <laughs> A uh, story of the one of the tribes that lives in Maine, um, and a very brief version of this story is that two women went out swimming without the elders' permission or without any supervision, um, and they turned into mermaids because of this as a consequence. But uh, they did promise to their elders and their community and families that they would continue to carry the water in the canoe. And that, you know, really makes me think of a lot of the things that we've learned about in this class. Um, one of the Potawatomi uh, stories of mermaid, which is one of the one of the nations that's close to where I'm from in Chatham, Kent, there are uh, some Potawatomi 
uh, lands in, in the Chatham Kent area. Um, so they talk about six male adventurers that go to visit the sun. Uh, and they ask the son for eternal life and the ability to give back to their fellow men. Uh, one out of the six men wanted to be close to water and becomes the first merman, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and also interesting because uh, it's men in this story. And I was sort of expecting more women because of the association of women and water and things like that. Um, another story was of the Ottawa people, and I, I'm going to have trouble saying this, Adira, Adirondacks, um, and basically that story is of a mermaid named Minana, and she's taken by the Ottawa warriors, but falls in love with a man named Piscaret of the other um, nation who are enemies with these people um, and that other nation, the A nation, um, they persecute the young lovers and they say, you know, this is wrong and things like that. Um, but Minana asks the water spirits for help and they actually overturn the A nation's canoes. Um, most of them perish, but she's able to save her lover, uh, which is interesting in that one. Um, and finally, one of, one of the other things that stood out to me is uh, the Mi'kmaq name for water spirits are Sabah Elenu, or halfway people, uh, which are the people that are half human, half fish. Um, so it really just goes to show that uh, from coast to coast on Turtle Island and around the world, there are many indigenous nations who... Uh, have folklore about uh, mer people, <laughs> um, and a lot. This article closes by saying that whether the teachings are about consequences, about the relationship to the natural world, or as a vessel for beliefs, um, that there are many, many stories on this, um, and I'm sure there's much more that I don't know. But I'm already at 12 minutes, so I'll cut it off now. Um, I wanted to say thank you so much for this opportunity to do such a fun project and for being such an enthusiastic prof this semester. It's been really great to learn alongside you. Thank you so much for dealing with all of my incessant questions. I know I ask a lot, but it's because I want to learn, you know, um, and I really do just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for just being such an amazing prof this semester and helping me to better understand Indigenous pedagogy and the way that we learn um, and even the way that, you know, I learn a lot comes from this, whether uh, I was raised in the culture or not. I feel like that is part of my blood memory to um, sort of believe in these sort of things and to have this close connection with nature and with mythology and all these other things. Um, so thank you so much for just letting me explore that a little bit more this year. And I hope you're keeping well and safe and sound and healthy. Um, and I couldn't help but laugh when you said, I hope Netflix doesn't crash because I think we're all living off that right now. So once again, thank you so much. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed this project. I enjoyed doing my painting and learning more about uh, the indigenous 